Hey everybody, how's it going? Holly Warner here, owner, founder of Holly Warner Health. Everything health related. Functional medicine practitioner, not a doctor, disclaimer, and all of the other stuff that you can find in my bio if you need to know. All right, let's get right to it. Holly, you're eating all meat. Oh my God, aren't you worried about like estrogenic cancers? Cause you know what they say, eating red meat will give you breast cancer and other cancers that have to do with hormones like estrogen. No, 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 no it won't. That's been debunked a long time ago. Let me tell you a few things. And you know what? I made some notes. <laughs> Cause I mean, I like to go off on a tangent. So this way I'll stay focused. First off, let's talk about the difference between estrogens that our bodies produce and phytoestrogens. Okay, you ready for that? Many people like to debate phytoestrogens. Are they valid? Are they not valid? Do they cause an issue? Let me tell you a little story about some friends of mine over in the special forces. A lot of those guys jumped on the soy protein train and got boobies. Yeah, dudes and boobs, unless you're transitioning to be a girl, isn't your desired effect. So when you're all soyed up with these phytoestrogens, you gotta pause and think, how is it not hurting me? How is it not messing with my estrogen? I mean, the body's gonna look at it and go, yo, estrogen. But there's a difference between the stuff that our body produces, which is a alpha estrogen, versus the stuff that's coming from plants, which is a phytoestrogen, which is a beta estrogen. And when these beta estrogens lock on to our estrogen receptors in our body, they block them, they lock them down. And then what? The stuff that our body's producing kind of goes, Yo, hello, anybody home? Guess y'all don't need me. Deuces, and they bounce. Okay, so let's talk about you ladies in menopause. You know, the thing a while back was, drink a gallon, a gallon of all of these amazing, sexy estrogens in our soy milk, and it will help with these, whew, it's hot in here, hot flashes. And it does, because, Realistically, our body does recognize them as a type of estrogen, not the kind that we produce, but it is going to work much less efficiently, of course, which is why you guys are downing gallons of it and getting fat and cranky and possibly getting cancer. Just saying, throwing that out there because it's not a good kind of estrogen. But here's the thing. If it takes this much of that to do something within the body for our body to recognize it, in all we needed was this much of something that's bioavailable or in a format that our body recognizes, does this not seem counterproductive to you? Because it does to me. Again, eating meat, we're gonna get to that in a second. I just really wanted to delve into the whole, <sighs> during menopause, having soy. Here's the thing, with these phytoestrogens, they go either way, and either way is a good way. If you are a woman who is in childbearing years, these estrogens are gonna to contribute to things like PMS, depression, mood swings, irritability, all of that jazz, even endometriosis and PCOS. While in most cases, PCOS is said to be a testosterone dominant issue, it does have a estrogenic effect. So we want to be aware of where is our estrogen coming from? Is our body producing it? Are we getting it from outside sources? Are those outside sources harmful? Yes, these phytoestrogens do contribute to the bad kind of shit. Now, when you're menopausal, that same amount of phytoestrogen is gonna go the other way. It's gonna make your body go, ooh, I have all of the estrogen that I need. This is perfect. I don't need to produce my own. I don't need to do anything. But by that same token, it's not actually helping you or balancing you. So your body thinks that it has enough, but then it actually doesn't to perform the functions that are needed. So then we end up with the hot flashes and all of the other shit that goes with menopause. Back to the cycling female in childbearing years, it does sort of the same thing. It makes our body think that we have adequate amounts, but we don't or it'll make our body feel like we have less than what we need because it's not really recognizing it and then make us produce more. Either thing are not good. So if it thinks that we have enough but actually we don't and we're lacking, then a puzzle. If it thinks that we have too much and is producing less, like these are not good things guys. Are we understanding the concept here? And it's gonna go either way. 
There's no way to know which way it's going to go because it's going to come into your body and it's going to mess your body up and then your body's not going to produce what it's supposed to produce or it's going to produce too much of something, estrogen dominance. None of these things are good things. Okay, and then we get, you know, the vegans and the vegetarians and these plant-based people that come in and they go, yeah, but when you're a meat eater, there's way more estrogen floating around in your bloodstream. You can see it in testing. And this is like a whole estrogen dominance thing. Okay, listen, let's be clear about one thing. Just because you don't see your phytoestrogens really floating around in the bloodstream as much as you do from a meat eater, let's be clear. Meat does not in any way, shape, or form compare to the amount of hormones <laughs> that are in your plants i.e. your tofu and your soy and certain beans that you guys are eating. Legit, no joke. There are going to be some hormones, yes, absolutely, but these are, these are almost bioidentical to what the body's producing because it's coming from an animal source. So what we need to understand is something that our body can recognize and use versus something that our body doesn't know what the fuck to do with, which is a phytoestrogen. And I could go way deep into the science of all of that, but realistically, most people just want to hear the simple numbers of what's up. So, I wrote a few things down. Beef from an implanted steer. Three nanograms. Three nanograms of estrogen. From a non-implanted steer, two nanograms of estrogen. Now that seems like maybe it's a big number to some. Maybe some people are like, whoa, you know, this implanted steer, you see these cows are being raped. Sorry, had to throw that one in there because it's fucking funny. And they're being impregnated, impregnated in, in all of the shit storm that goes with it. Let me just clarify a few things here by showing you a chart. All right, hormones in cattle, since we brought it up, let's look. I'm gonna zoom in a bit here. Check this bottom one out, guys. There's the beef, the non-implanted versus the implanted, two nanograms versus three. Now we're gonna look at the milk. 15 nanograms and butter 141 nanograms now this is we're looking at like eight ounces here eggs ooh, 252 now let's skip to peanuts guys peanuts to 45,000 that's quite the jump okay so remind me why we were concerned with these numbers down here the beef I mean let's look back up here again white bread, let's look at pinto green, let's look at tofu. Do you guys see that number? How about soy flour? That's a big number. Now if you go over here to the natural estrogens that occur, look at this. Here's the numbers. Human potential intake of estrogen from beef from implanted cattle is, not, is 7 nanograms per 500 grams of beef. Let that sink in for a bit. Y'all are out there making a big stinky poo over these numbers that are really not that concerning. Now, just to put this into um, perspective, a nanogram is a billionth of a gram. So one nanogram is kind of like one blade of grass on a football field. Yeah. We can also look at this handy little chart which shows the estrogen produced by our body every single day. So now that other chart, we talked about eight ounces of milk having 15 nanograms of estrogen, butter and eggs. We thought that looked scary until we looked at eight ounces of peanuts having 435,360 nanograms of estrogen or a white bread or pinto beans or tofu coming in at like 51 million. 483,600 nanograms. Yeah, y'all wanna eat your tofu? Okay, sure, great. You see, tofu and soy flour, if you look at this chart, they outweigh a pregnant woman's naturally occurring estrogen by like a lot. So you still believe that a plant-based diet is superior and that hum humans who consume uh, beef are basically the ones that are to blame for this rise in estrogen? Literally. Y'all are telling me that beef is the problem. My red meat consumption is the problem as to why my estrogen would be, could be, possibly is so high. Well, I can tell you one thing, my estrogen's not high. It's actually fantastic. And I'll be 42 in a couple of months. 
my estrogen's on point, progesterone's on point, my insulin's fantastic, that's a whole other video that we're gonna need to get into, is your insulin sensitivity and your insulin resistance having to do with your estrogen and the vicious cycle, which increase your triglycerides, not the meat and the fat that you're consuming. But we'll get to that one later. So for now, this is me signing off saying, I'm gonna go eat myself a steak and not worry about my hormones. <laughs>